the night of rain and terror. The rain came down in torrents, a relentless deluge that turned the roads into rivers and the air into a thick, wet mist. Sam and Mia had been driving for hours, hoping to reach their cabin before the storm hit, but the weather had other plans. The winding country road was barely visible, the headlights struggling to cut through the sheets of rain. We should have left earlier, Mia said, her voice tense. She gripped the map tightly, though it was useless in the dark and the downpour. Sam nodded, his knuckles white on the steering wheel. I know. We just need to find a place to pull over and wait it out. Just as he spoke, the headlights caught a flicker of movement. A sign, barely legible through the rain, pointed towards a small motel up ahead. Relieved, Sam turned onto the gravel driveway. The tires crunched on the wet gravel as they approached a dilapidated building with a flickering neon sign. Rosewood Inn. Not exactly five-star, Mia remarked, but her relief was evident. They parked and dashed inside, the rain soaking them in seconds. The lobby was dimly lit, the smell of mildew thick in the air. Behind the counter, an elderly man looked up, his face a mask of indifference. Need a room? He asked in a gravelly voice. Yes, please, Sam replied, just for the night. The man slid a dusty key across the counter. Room seven, end of the hall. They thanked him and hurried down the creaky hallway, eager to get out of their wet clothes. The room was small and musty, but it was dry and warm. They quickly changed and settled onto the bed, the sound of the rain pounding against the windows a constant backdrop. At least we're out of the storm, Mia said, trying to stay positive. Sam nodded, though he couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over him. The motel was strange, and the old man's indifferent demeanor hadn't helped. But they were safe, and that was what mattered. Chapter 2. The Stranger As the night wore on, the rain showed no signs of letting up. Sam tossed and turned, the unease growing into a gnawing anxiety. He finally got up, deciding to get some fresh air to clear his mind. He slipped out of the room and walked down the hall, the dim light casting long shadows. As he reached the lobby, he saw the old man again, sitting behind the counter. But this time, he wasn't alone. A tall, thin man in a rain-soaked coat stood there, speaking in low tones. Something about the stranger sent a chill down Sam's spine. His posture was rigid, his face obscured by the hood of his coat. Sam couldn't hear what they were saying, but the conversation seemed tense. He turned to leave, but the old man's eyes snapped to him, and the stranger turned slowly, as if sensing his presence. Can I help you? The old man asked, his tone flat. Sam forced a smile. Just needed some air. I'll be heading back now. The old man nodded, but the stranger's gaze lingered on Sam, a cold, unsettling stare. Sam hurried back to the room, his heart pounding. What's wrong? Mia asked, seeing his pale face. There's something off about this place, Sam said, his voice low. He told her about the stranger and the eerie conversation. Mia frowned. Maybe we should leave. In this storm? It's not safe. We'll wait till morning. Reluctantly, Mia agreed, but neither of them could sleep. The rain seemed to grow louder, the wind howling outside. Chapter 3. The unraveling hours passed, and Sam's anxiety only grew. He got up again, unable to shake the feeling that they were being watched. He peered out the window and froze. The stranger was standing outside, looking directly at their room. Mia, get up, he whispered urgently. She jolted awake and followed his gaze. Oh my God, what does he want? Sam shook his head. We need to leave, now. They quickly gathered their things and crept out of the room, hoping to avoid the stranger. As they reached the lobby, the old man was gone, but the front door was wide open, the rain blowing in. They ran to their car, but the stranger was faster. He appeared out of the darkness, blocking their path. Going somewhere? He asked, his voice cold and mocking. Sam tried to push past him, but the man grabbed him, his grip like iron. You shouldn't have come here, the stranger hissed. You can't leave now. Mia screamed and tried to pull the man off Sam, but he was too strong. Suddenly, the old man appeared, holding a shotgun. Let them go, he ordered. The stranger laughed, a chilling sound. You can't protect them, old man. They belong to the storm now. With a sudden, inhuman speed, the stranger lunged at the old man. A shot rang out, and the stranger fell, writhing and screeching. His form twisted and contorted, becoming less human with each passing second. Sam and Mia watched in horror as the stranger dissolved into the rain, his body melding with the storm. Chapter 4. The Escape 
the old man turned to them, his face grim. Get in your car and drive. Don't stop until you're far away from here. Who was that? Sam asked, his voice shaking. An ancient curse, the old man replied. This storm, it's more than just weather. It brings him out, and he takes those who are unlucky enough to be caught in it. They didn't need to be told twice. Sam and Mia jumped into their car and sped away, the old man's warning echoing in their minds. The rain continued to pour, but as they drove farther from the motel, the storm began to lessen, the oppressive feeling lifting. It wasn't until they reached the safety of their cabin, miles away, that they finally felt they could breathe. They collapsed onto the bed, my holding each other tightly. We're safe now, Mia whispered, though her voice wavered. Sam nodded, but he couldn't shake the feeling of unease. As he drifted off to sleep, he dreamed of the stranger's cold, unblinking eyes and the storm that seemed to follow them. Epilogue, the aftermath. The next morning, they decided to report the incident to the local authorities, but when they returned to the site of the Rosewood Inn, there was nothing but an empty lot overgrown with weeds. No sign of the motel or the old man. It was as if it had never existed. As they stood there, bewildered and shaken, a local approached them. You two look lost. Can I help you? We were here last night, Sam explained. There was a motel, the Rosewood Inn. The local's face paled. The Rosewood Inn burned down 50 years ago in a terrible storm. They say it's cursed. People who go looking for it sometimes see it, but those who stay the night, they never come back. Sam and Mia exchanged horrified glances. They had escaped, but they knew the curse of the storm was real. The stranger, the old man, the Rosewood Inn, they were all part of a nightmarish truth they would never forget. And every time it rained, they would remember the night they faced the terror of Pinewood Forest. The Haunting in the Rain The rain began as a light drizzle, pattering gently on the roof of Claire's car as she drove down the winding country road. She had been visiting her grandmother and was now heading back to the city, hoping to make it home before the weather worsened. The radio crackled with static, unable to hold a signal in the remote area. The drizzle quickly turned into a downpour. Sheets of rain lashed against the windshield, and visibility dropped to almost nothing. Claire turned on her high beams, but they did little to pierce the darkness. She slowed the car to a crawl, gripping the steering wheel tightly. As she rounded a bend, she saw a figure standing by the side of the road, illuminated briefly by her headlights. A woman, drenched and shivering, with long dark hair plastered to her face. Claire's heart skipped a beat. She pulled over, rolling down the window slightly. Do you need help? She called out. The woman looked up, her eyes wide and pleading. Please, she said, her voice barely audible over the rain. I need to get to town. Without thinking, Claire unlocked the passenger door. Get in. The woman climbed into the car, shivering violently. Thank you, she said, her voice shaky. I didn't think anyone would stop. No problem, Claire replied, though she couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. What were you doing out there in this weather? I had an accident, the woman explained. My car went off the road. I've been walking for hours. Claire nodded, but something about the woman's story didn't quite add up. They drove in silence for a few minutes, the rain pounding on the roof like a thousand tiny hammers. Claire glanced over at her passenger, noticing for the first time how pale and cold she looked, almost translucent. What's your name? Claire asked, trying to make conversation. Lily, the woman replied. Lily Harris. Claire's heart skipped another beat. The name sounded familiar, too familiar. She racked her brain, trying to place it. <laughs> Chapter 2 the realization. As they approached the outskirts of town, Claire remembered a news article she had read months ago about a young woman named Lily Harris who had disappeared during a storm just like this one. Her car had been found abandoned on a back road, but Lily was never seen again. A chill ran down Claire's spine. She glanced at Lily, who was staring straight ahead, her expression vacant. Did you say your name was Lily Harris? Claire asked, her voice trembling. Yes, Lily replied, not looking at her. Why? Claire's mind raced. I read about you. You went missing months ago. Lily turned to look at her, her eyes filled with sorrow. I did. And I never made it out of the storm. Claire's blood ran cold. What do you mean? I died that night, Lily said softly. I've been trying to find my way home ever since. Chapter 3. 
the revelation. Claire's heart pounded in her chest. She wanted to stop the car, but her hands wouldn't obey. The rain seemed to grow louder, drowning out all rational thought. Why are you here now? Claire whispered. I don't know, Lily replied. I just need to get home. The car suddenly lurched and the engine sputtered. Claire pulled over, her hands shaking. She turned to Lily, but the passenger seat was empty. Water pooled where she had been sitting and the car was filled with an icy chill. Terrified, Claire fumbled for her phone, dialing the number of the local police. I, I picked up a hitchhiker, she stammered. Her name was Lily Harris. She, she said she was dead. The officer on the other end was silent for a moment. Stay where you are, he said finally. We're sending someone out. Claire sat in the car, shivering and wet, waiting for what felt like an eternity. Finally, a patrol car pulled up behind her. The officer approached, his flashlight cutting through the rain. Miss, are you okay? He asked. Claire nodded, tears streaming down her face. She was right here, I swear. The officer looked at the empty seat, then back at Claire. This road, it's where Lily Harris disappeared. You're not the first to see her. She appears to those who need help, guiding them to safety. Claire stared at him, her mind reeling. But why me? The officer shrugged. Maybe she sensed your kindness. Maybe she needed someone to hear her story one last time. As the rain began to let up, Claire felt a strange sense of peace. She knew she would never forget this night, the night she met Lily Harris, the ghost who guided her through the storm.